Hello everybody, welcome to the channel, this is RageKage81. Today we're going to play some offlane Severog. Now first we're going to take a look at the draft, because the draft is extremely important. Um, Paragon has gotten to the point where you can win or lose games based off of the draft. If you draft poorly, it could be of great consequence to your team, so trying to draft... Um, correctly is very important, right? So, in here we're going to play Severog. I already kind of know what I'm going to get. But, um, the reason why this is going to be important because uh, based off of our selection, our team really needs a tank. And nobody's really selecting the offlane position. So, I'm going to go with what I felt was the best option as far as uh, supplying the team with the tank and a character that can ha handle the offlane very well. Now, Severog is really good in a couple of positions. Um, most people tend to favor him in the jungle. Uh, that way, he can get a lot of stacks and you know he can get his ability and health up really fast uh, through the jungle. But uh, he also does very well in the offlane. A little bit harder for him to get his stacks going in the early game. But uh, if you're still pretty good at doing it, at siphoning and using your abilities to get uh, get those stacks, uh, you should be just fine. And uh, the also, also the good thing about uh, playing him in offlane is, in contrast to playing him in jungle, is Severog gets levels very fast, which is extremely helpful. Um, and here we actually got kind of what I would consider a dream team. You got a caster, a fighter, a carry, a tank and a traditional support. This is one of my favorite lineups. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun with this. And the other reason why I wanted to do an offlane is because I've had a couple of questions from a few friends as to how you uh, handle a Revenant in the offlane. Because Revenant's very strong currently, especially with his Obliterate. He can get a lot of damage on you. So. Uh, the best way to start stuff off is with a good foundation, and I always select my wards, and it's a, it's a dummy ward, and vision is extremely helpful. Um, I've said it in every video that I've done, that wards all the time, every time, and I've actually had people say that warding in this location is pointless because it does nothing for you, and it, it's quite on the contrary. Um, that'll let you know if... You know, enemies are trying to gank you from your tower, and also when your jungler comes around, um, he knows that there's not a ward there, so he could potentially make a move, you know, from that fog wall. So that becomes really, really important. And the other thing is try to notice what your enemies are selecting. And here, uh, the Revenant selected something like a Bump Juice and a Madstone Gem. The Madstone Gem is really good for him, uh, but the Bump Juice is terrible. Just don't even pick that card. Not unless I give it some sort of a buff. It's, I don't know, maybe like a 90 HP um, bump in your health. It's, it's not really all that good. Um, part of the other foundation is taking these minion camps and observing what's happening on your mini map. And I'm sorry, junglers, these minions are not for you. Um, this is to help your offlaner. It's going to be extremely helpful, especially on a Severog, because I'm going to get all four of these, and that's going to mean I get 12 additional health, and I already start off with four stacks. So it gives me a little bit of a bump, and it actually, you know, health-wise, uh, a bit of a bump, and uh, card point-wise, because I'm going to get starved here. Um, so the best part about dealing with a Revenant is uh, playing the distance game, playing the range game. So you want to make sure you kind of keep distance from that Revenant in your early game. And seeing how we did take damage from the minions uh, clearing them out in the jungle, we also want to play the distance game because uh, we need to regen that health and we need to stay alive. You can see that the uh, the Revenant's hitting kind of hard right now. He hit me with one or two shots there and, yeah, it took me down a peg. But, uh, you know, survivability, that health pot and the uh, health regen is going to help out significantly for me to sustain during the course of these first few minutes. And so a lot of it is just taking, you know, taking into consideration what this uh, this team comp can do. Uh, there's not really a problem from Steel unless he gets really good positioning. 
So we want to make sure that we always play the range game with the Revenant. Try to not let him get those uh, those hits on me. As you can see there, he used his uh, his ability that does a, a damage increase over time. So don't let him get those hits. And try to play the range from the minion so he can't land the complete obliterate. And the reason why I picked Sevrog was also for the root. Capitalize on mistakes. We have the jungler rotating in. They were underneath my tower, root him. Next we're going to notice the Howie rotation, which is amazing. And the reason why we picked Sevrog again is to root. Beautiful rotations from the team. Got a, both of them killed in my lane. And now you start to focus on pressing advantages. So where the advantage comes here is to try to push out this lane and get the farm while I can, right? Because there's nobody in this lane and I have the opportunity to push it up and it's going to be perfect timing. So I could go back, I could capitalize on the points that I've grabbed, you know, card points, and I can recall off of this with enough time that the minion waves came in here and I could safely recall and make it back to my lane without, uh, without them even really damaging it. So once again we pick up the wards. First card buy every time guys. It's gonna give that vision again. And we just, you know, the carry didn't even know we were coming so punish them with the siphon. Get a little damage on them. Scare them off. So that ward is gonna help me know that there's anybody coming around. And we just keep playing the uh, the range game. So I got vision that, you know, if anybody tries to gank, you know, I can run away. Safety under my tower, and just keep playing the range game with this uh, this uh, revenant here. And he doesn't have his support, so I could freely just kind of farm this out, try to get a few stacks, and I could push up a little bit. There's nobody here to contest me, so like enemies are missing, right? And you know, there's not much you could do. And all of a sudden, he starts making mistakes. Uh, Revenant's starting to open up with his uh, obliterate trying to scare me off, but, you know, kind of playing within the minions, and barely any of it hits me. He keeps using that obliterate, which is which is hurtful for him, because he's now running out of mana. He really doesn't have anything to follow up. He can't use his damage buff. can't use really anything, so he's trying to rotate onto my friendlies here, and I'm trying to keep uh, that dam or that fight in the, in the river uh, in my vision. So nobody's here, and now we can rotate. We can push up that lane, and it's going to force a rotation over. So he's got to come back. And I have the opportunity to kind of cut off his rotation, trying to take me from the side, play some wards. If you guys don't believe that vision is everything in this game, this is going to be an, an example of how strong it is. You know, it's going to scare him off, force him back to the lane because we pushed it out, and now mid lane doesn't have any vision of us. So we're going to rotate. I'm thinking I'm going to have my ultimate ready and knock him back away from this tower. So that he can't... It makes it harder for the Countess to kind of get away. And it's going to cause the Sevrog to come out. And uh, the timing is going to be perfect here because we're going to get this river buff. It's going to freely put make us uh, able to help out with mid again because they're pushing too hard now. They try to chase that thing now. Howitzer's coming in now. Refresh, full mana, full health. We have invisible buff. Root the Sevrog. Get him underneath this tower. That's a double kill in the mid, just off of the rotations and the river buff alone. So that was an issue of, uh, I've got a low health. Low health and low mana. But uh, I do need to get on this. Try to make sure I do give an attempt to defend this tower. Uh, lucky step by the Revenant to step up and got out of my uh, my ultimate to kind of knock him in the tower and put him in a bad spot. But, uh, it does defend the tower. Pulls him off of it. Uh, unfortunately, our rotation from our mid and jungler were a little bit late, but it's actually really good that they're here. As I do need to rotate <coughs> our recall and uh, get all my uh, health plots back and my mana and upgrade my cards. So Fangmail's been holding my lane, which is actually very good for us. As you're going to notice that the uh, 
The Revenant and the Steel are very low on mana and already hurt and they've been taking some damage. So, gotta push this lane, keep some pressure on. And make sure they stay here because it's really good for the rest of our team because they can push in their lanes and they don't have to worry about rotations from a carry or a support to get over there. Now finally they're going to start backing, but it's going to give me free time to uh, farm and push out this lane and try to force them back to this lane to defend it. We could see with the, the vision of the ward with, that the steel is trying to make a rotation in mid to cut off our Howie. So we're going to try to punish this and take care of the steel. And root him, he doesn't have his charge because we stopped it cancelled it out and we got him really low we have a fang mail behind us so we do have the time to put a lot of pressure in here and uh yeah gotta kind of try to exchange targets there because i do eventually want to take the carry off and uh this lane is still in our our favor the support's really low there's nothing really a steel can do at this point so all I'm trying to do is just push the minions in the tower, make it harder for the carry to last hit, make it harder for the support to support them. If they both try to take last hits, they're both kind of nerfing each other, and you know if the tower takes the hit, they don't get the card points from it. So now we have the time to back, upgrade, and uh, I built Severog's tank. So told you the team needs a tank, so we're going to build all that health, all that damage, or, I'm sorry, all that armor. Not really focus on damage because I don't need it. I shouldn't need it. And a tank shouldn't really need to build damage. Um, so we're going to go back to left lane, make sure we push it out and they don't get free tower damage. But it's only the Revenant. No support. So we're going to go ham. Yeah, I've got the advantage on them. I got cards. <clears throat> and I'm going to have the opportunity to kill them, but finally. <laughs> they get a enemy rotation on me, so <clears throat> yeah, they stop from the carry dying, but the carry's not going to get any farm. So pressing advantage is here. I deny the carry any more farm, any more XP. <clears throat> so now I could just kind of push out the lane, and uh, Severox using abilities for no reason. Uh, so he really doesn't have much to help out this this steel. I can just try to free push this lane and uh, let my uh, let my friendlies do the work. I'm just trying to push up this minion wave so they have pressure. And I, I want to back because I don't know where the countess is and where the enemy's rotation is. The only people really showing is in the left lane. So best thing for me to do is just back. You don't need to die for unnecessary reasons. So we're going to get back to left lane, take out their wards, guys. You, you want to try to deny as much vision as you possibly can and give yourself as much vision as you can, right? So we already got the ward in left, so we're going to look to place one. And uh, once again, if you don't believe that uh, vision is powerful, um, this Severog is going to go do a great display of how it is. So we're going to try to make this move on left. You can see from the ping of the ward that the Severog is actually giving vision, which causes the uh, the uh, the support and carry to back off. So prevented a gank from me trying to dump your your carry in the tower and getting a free easy kill. So just that move from their Severog in the jungle helped them out significantly. Um, but now that this this lane is pushed, we have time to make rotations. Now, I don't agree with the Fang Miao uh, gank there when we have mid being pressured. Or how he's in a lot of trouble. So we need to try to help this out, like ease the pressure off of him a little bit. And don't know how that ultimate miss, but... Uh, whatever. <laughs> Let's try to get here on this rotation. 
and help out with the team tank a little bit. And once again, the reason why wards are important is we know that there's a uh, there's a rotation coming from left. We want to make sure that the thing now sees this. So wards help out yourself and help out your team. And uh, off lane, you want to keep making sure this lane's pushed out. Um, if you have the opportunity to push it out, man, you should always be doing it. You're, you're trying to press advantages now. And how you press advantages in off lane is to keep this pushed so that you, you constantly force somebody to be in this lane so you can get uh, rotations off on uh, other lanes and ganks off so you push a numbers advantage. Here... Um, we're trying to make sure that we get uh, this lane pushed out, but we're going to catch vision of a gank coming in. So, best thing you can do is just, just leave, and we notice that we forced a three-man rotation to our lane. So that means that only two people can be showing on the map. And you see that both of them are mid, so our, our safe lane is kind of safe for now. They can kind of free push and do whatever they need and uh, get that lane pushed out. And here's kind of a, uh, you know, like how to not use your abilities. That Sevrog and Steel actually bailed me out of here. <laughs> so I do end up losing my tower, but that's that's perfectly fine. It's I've held on to that tower for almost 16 minutes. It's pretty good in an off-lane scenario. So that's pretty much the... Uh, the offlane laning phase. It's going to be it for me, but I do need to help the team. I'm team tank, and one thing I love is people that are out of position. <laughs> it's so much fun to punish them at Severog. And part of team tank is get in their faces. Don't be afraid to take damage. They have to force me away off of that carry. And now that they used abilities, my team can fr freely go in. We get the help of the support, why it's so important to pick these characters, and zone out. Now, I'm not going to get that Severog, but we do need to zone out the steel, make sure he doesn't hit anybody. That's going to end up in a kill. So we have a three-man advantage, and one thing I try to teach people is push the advantage. Um, I don't get a lot of people doing this, but it's uh, very important that you try to take an objective when you've you've won a, a really good team fight. So we want to try to get this mid lane pushed out because I do want to see rotations from Howitzer and uh, help him out in his lane a little bit and push it out. So now that we've got an objective, you don't need to stay there. And you can see that the enemy is now respawning. So we got the objective. There's no reason to be there anymore. Ping your team to retreat and deny them uh, river buffs and try to pick those up. So now that they're trying to push back mid, uh, we've got a perfect rotation here from our team. And the whole idea is just to get in their faces and tank it up. And here, yes, I do die, but I end up getting a carry. We score a double kill. At least a double kill here in mid. And Countess has used the bulk of her abilities, so she really can't follow up on my Narbash and Howie. It's one of the reasons why you try to tank, you try to bait out a lot of those abilities from uh, from the enemy so they can't finish up your team. So, after that, we go back to left lane. And I, just like before, we want to keep pressing this out. So we force rotations and try to get ourselves in an advantageous position in uh, opposite lanes. So the idea is to try to push this out and force somebody to be here. Because if they do decide to make a move in some other lane, you know, they're not pushing this. And uh, this lane will start to push against them. And now I can free rotate. <clears throat> so we're going to try to help them out in mid. Plot my wards and let them know that the rotation is coming from backside from, from the steel. But once again, trying to team tank, I need to get in there and put some pressure in and spot people that are out of position. The uh, 
who is at the, uh, the caster, um, Morgesh was out of position because the team, the their uh, jungler and their support were too focused on me, and I could freely go in underneath tower and take out their uh, their caster who does a ton of damage. So we come out advantageous in the in center lane, and I want to try to get these these minions to kind of help out, try to get some easy stacks, and uh, just looking to push out left lane. Trying to spot rotations, basically what I'm doing here, and uh, and also also get stacks, try to get that health up, and try to get you know everything going for me. And notice that the revenants here, we got a Narvash rotation, and I'm trying to spot where the revenant will uh, will reappear here, and it's funny to me because the Narvash ended up really destroying him. So, root the carry, get him off the board. Come in here and try to tank it up, try to force out all the abilities on me. Try to help out with the team, get some kills, force out abilities. There's a Morgash ultimate on me, not on my team. Perfect example of why tanking is really good in Paragon. So back to left lane. They're trying to push it out. I got a friendly rotation. Uh, best thing for me to do is try to push out this lane, but I do want to help out because, once again, Team Tank. They're going to end up getting our Narbash. But they're so focused on the fight, I get to jump in on their squishies. And I get to jump in here. I'm already taking out one of their squishies and working on another. And you'll see that all these abilities are used on me. There's a Revenant ult, there's a Steel ult, there's an enemy dead. I get to walk out. We end up getting at least three of their characters for our one support. That's that's an advantage we'll take. <laughs> so it's really good. I love tanking in Paragon. People don't under under and the people underestimate the value of it. Uh, so now we got to push out mid. And we want to try to help out with this thing now, just in case the Countess gets away, we can supply him with the root to seal the deal. And uh, push advantages again. Um, nobody seems to be in their jungle and I've warded it. So we're going to get a free, some free buffs and uh, try to spot rotations. Now, I am the off laner, there's a Morgish, uh pushing my left lane. So... We either need to try to uh, push the lane back or stop the Morgash rotation. Oh, I've got this Morgash kind of dead to rights, so to speak. Um, and she's trying to hide behind orb. This is actually an advantage to me. Because I actually do want to hit that orb because I want the, uh, the shield to pop and do extra damage on her. And uh, meanwhile, in your jungle... <laughs> We have a three-man rotation going in there, and we're going to mop up. Finally get the help of my Yin, and uh, try to help her push this out. Uh, problem here, though, is I need to show back up in mid lane, and I have three three guys uh, next to the Yin, so we just want a team fight. Uh, the team should be helping the Yin take that down, and the Yin is actually in the right move here to try to push it down, but for some reason... Um, I guess our whole friendly team decides that it's a better idea to defend this one. I've got it. And for this decision, it's going to end up being bad. Because uh, nobody's there to help out with the Yin. Which is unfortunate. So I kind of wanted to show that. If you guys have an advantage somewhere, that should have been four men on that, uh, on that tier 2 mid. And everybody should have get out, got out uh, with their lives, right? So we need to push out left lane. And uh, we want to make sure that we award it objectives. Part of playing offline is to make sure that uh, you have your objectives awarded. And I'm on the death side, so make sure Ward Prime is awarded. 
And here I'm just trying to help out with uh, pushing mid lane because we do want to keep up minion, um, what's it called, minion management and keep advantages pressed in, in the lanes. We have a team fight happening in our safe lane. And I need to be there. I'm team tank. But the uh, problem and the issue is, is I'm kind of low on health and low on mana. But I want to try to get in here to make as much value out of this uh, this ultimate and try to get in there and make them use abilities. And they've started this team fight. I'm here to see that the uh, friendly team succeeds. Now, once again, the idea was to try to bait out all of those uh, all those abilities so they're really low, and what they don't pay attention. And they don't pay attention to what's going on in the background. And this is a primary example of letting your team be able to do what they need to do. And part of playing in is to carry. Um, and I need to be tank, right? So I'm going to upgrade more health. We're going to get to finish watching our carry do what a carry is supposed to do. There you have it. The TR carry gets to mop up. So the game went on a little bit, a couple of bad decisions, but we did end up getting more prime and currently our our yin and our howitzer have it. So trying to take take into consideration of uh, minion wave advantages. They currently have it on us both in off lane. So this is an example of how you manage minion waves um, and trying to get them pressed into your advantage so far. Uh, the enemy team's pushing up hard on right lane and uh, the howitzer's pushing out left and we need them to push out mid because we don't need the enemy team to have uh, all minion waves pushing against us because that'd be a huge tactical advantage. So now that he's got those waves pushed out, um, he can help uh, defend this lane without us losing any more towers. And Howie does an amazing job. Amazing job kind of cleaning that up and successfully defending our tier 2. And now there, three of them are dead, two of them are in right. We need to keep up with the, the formula of pressing advantages. So, because of the howitzer, we have left lane pushing in our favor, mid lane pushing in our favor. And we want to make sure we have that advantage going. So, in order to help this out, we complement this. We got Fang Miao in mid, and we got me going back to left lane. So, I just want to kind of clear this up, make sure that menu wave keeps pushing. And uh, I want to rotate to mid because we have a we have a thing now there, and I'm team tank and he's in a very dangerous position. So mainly I'm just coming up here to uh, supply peels, maybe um, maybe help him get a kill so we have even more of an advantage. And I'm not really scared here because it's a steel support and it's the Severog um, that's building damage. And he has no mana for the most part. So I'm just here trying to be a nuisance and make sure my Fang now gets out with his life. So in order to help out your team, you root the problem. And you peel for your care or you peel for your uh, your fighter that was up there. So we made sure our Fang now got out alive. And another way to push advantages is make sure they don't get river buffs. So we're gonna take that advantage that we had take the river buffs away from them and go back to where we needed help more uh, because of that decision they uh, they pushed out mid but they forgot about they forgot about my lane so we're gonna be able to push out lanes have just about everything in our advantage and we know we're going to left lane so place the wards for vision extremely helpful <laughs> and they're going to let us know that anybody's up here. And if you're Siege in Tier 2 of the Ward video board, you should be placing it. So that Ward 
going to give us the vision that we need. I've got the help of a friendly rotation. And so Rog makes a huge mistake. We kill the person coming here to take care of this minion wave to stop us pushing. We've got a triple kill in the opposite lane. Uh, and now we can keep pressing that advantage. How he's got uh, tier 2 down. It's going to help out with a little bit of the clear. Just keep pushing the advantage. We have 16 minion waves and our minions in here. All enemies have fallen. Take that advantage. This is why you tank up and you try to push those advantages in off lane. So I hope this guy's hope this helps you out with a little bit of your off lane gameplay and uh, learning how to tank in Paragon too, and reasoning why. Uh, tanks are very powerful in here. You can see as far as uh, their tankiest character could be is their Steel and Severog. Uh, their Steel went 0 and 10. Their Severog went 3 and 7. And my lane opponent, which was the Revenant, went 5 and 9. He didn't even get 60 card points. Our Yin did. I went uh, 7, 5, and 11, I think. So I hope this, guys, once again helps you out. This has been Rage KJD1.